Mr. Skindle, we appreciate your leadership. Thank you for the introduction of this legislation. Good morning, I'm Jack Shainer, Deputy Director of Ohio Environmental Council. I think this is an altogether an appropriate and reasonable and urgent moratorium. This does not say no forever to deep shell gas development, but it does say slow down, let's take our time, let's get the best available science, and let's get the most protective safeguards and regulations in place to guide the sensible, thoughtful, responsible development of the significant resource. As uh, Senator Skindle said, uh, hydraulic fracturing is, is really a, a new ball game when it comes to drilling. Massive quantities of water, millions of gallons of water used per well, many, many, over 500 chemicals, many of those toxic chemicals, and a whole toxic hit parade of dangerous byproducts that are, can be dangerous to human health and the environment. In fact, uh, one of the sleepers is uh, air pollution. We've, we've heard a lot about water pollution, water concerns, which are very serious, and you're going to hear a little more about. But uh, air pollution is also a very significant concern, and if we don't do this right, we could turn the Ohio Valley, eastern Ohio, into a real ozone alley. Now, we are not alone in our concerns. I've attached to my statement some excerpts from a recent uh, interim report from the United States Department of Energy, the Secretary's advisory board, his subcommittee on uh, natural gas, deep shell development. I'd like to read to you uh, one sentence from that report. Quote, intensive shell gas development can potentially have serious impacts on public health, the environment, and quality of life, even when individual operators conduct their activities in ways that meet and exceed regulatory requirements. That is, again, the United States Department of Energy making that statement. I'm not sure I can think of a more mainstream, uh, you know, respected source. I think we should really heed that, uh, that admonition there. Bottom line, Ohio needs protective safeguards in place, and we need them right away. I want to uh, acknowledge, uh, Senator Skindle remarked about the Ohio EPA, I want to acknowledge and thank, publicly thank, Ohio EPA Director Scott Nally for cracking down, putting a ban on accepting wastewater from, uh, uh, from drilling operations and treating that in public wastewater treatment plants, sewer plants. The directors put his foot down to that. Unfortunately, sadly, the previous administration had allowed that in East Liverpool, so we do thank EPA Director for that. Also, I want to point out the Ohio Department of Natural Resources is currently drafting rules to implement Senate Bill 165. Senate Bill 165, we all remember, was the legislation last year that did strengthen Ohio law. But we got to get going. We got to get those in place. This black gold rush is on the way. Uh, thousands of leases have been signed in Ohio. Department of Natural Resources has already given a few permits. Uh, now, to their credit, they have uh, beefed up the, the, the permits uh, and made those stronger than the current regulatory system. But we really need to get those rules in place. But we got to do it right. And there's a number of places we can look to make sure we are doing it right. Right. You know the old uh, saying: uh, "Measure twice, cut once." Uh, couldn't be more applicable when it comes to this debate over how in the world do we safely uh, extract this resource, get the benefits from the resource, and yet protect our air, our land, our water, and our property rights. I'll just conclude by pointing out the United States EPA study that Senator Skindle's proposed moratorium is linked to is expected to be completed, or at least initial results, in next year, sometime next year, 2012. Uh, that, that report is specifically looking at what are the potential risks to groundwater and drinking water, including what impact does removing the large amounts of water needed in high-pressure drilling uh, have on watersheds and aquifers, and what are the potential impacts of the chemicals used in drilling in hydrofraction process, wastewater, and fractured geology? What will that have impacts? Will that have on water quality and underground drinking water supplies? So a year or two is not a long time to wait for a resource that's been underground there for millions of years. It's not going anywhere. Let's take our time. Let's do it right. Let's be safe, not sorry. And Senator Skindle, thank you again for your proposal, because it is clearly the right way to go.